Comics Recap here. Today I'm going to explain a comic called Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The X-Men brought Deadpool to Ravenscroft Asylum. He's placed under the care of Dr. Benjamin Brighton, known for his radical new solutions to ease troubled minds and turn unstable heroes into something more malleable. Deadpool is wheeled into the asylum as he blabs on and on and on about what can only be described as utter nonsense. As Professor Xavier endorses Wade to Dr. Brighton, he is assured that Deadpool will get the doctor's personal attention, a subtle hint toward more sinister intentions. Still babbling nonsense, Wade is brought into Dr. Brighton's office, and they are soon left alone to get to know each other better. Wade characteristically jumps into the therapy chair and starts telling his story about a coal miner's daughter who was never breastfed, until Dr. Brighton cuts him off. He starts listing down what makes Wade Deadpool being a trained assassin, skilled in armed and unarmed combat, and regenerations that makes him almost impossible to kill. The doctor then brings up Psychoman, saying, what Dr. Brighton can fix, Psychoman will. He then begins to electrocute Wade as he finally reveals his true intentions. While it may seem like he's been rehabilitating loose heroes, Dr. Brighton's plan is much more ominous. After abandoning his conquest of the microverse and moving on to much larger targets, he realized he needed an army to accomplish his mission. With the world desperate to hide its troubled enemies, Dr. Brighton found the perfect opportunity to create his own group of willing soldiers who would do his bidding. The doctor continues to brutally electrocute Wade and only stops as soon as he thinks Deadpool is broken enough to resist. Big mistake. In a swift motion, Wade breaks free from his poorly tied straight jacket, knocks the doctor to the floor face down and starts choking him. The doctor's face falls apart and reveals Psychoman controlling him from a large cavity in the now dead doctor's head. Wade picks up tiny little Psychoman in a coarse humor and literally crushes him onto his release form for a good bill of health. The disembodied voice telling Deadpool what to do finally orders him to finish the job. He finds the rest of the staff, locks them in, and sets the whole place on fire. Wade walks away from the inferno. Superhero style, of course. Deadpool then went to the Baxter building to get the tools he'll need. He first killed Reed Richards, destroying his elasticity and allowing him to die slowly as he melted in the invisible woman's arms. He then chopped off the human torch's head before the invisible woman placed a force field in his brain, causing his head to explode. After a while, fully regenerated Deadpool stabbed the invisible woman in the back. A new voice then reaches his ears. Wade hones in on the voice and zaps the Watcher with a cosmic taser he had stolen from Mr. Fantastic's lab as it continues to speak. Stunned, the Watcher exclaims that he never interfered and couldn't believe Wade was able to hear or find him. Classic Deadpool explains that he's different, then beheads the Watcher with one sword swipe. This begins Deadpool's bloody rampage. No one is safe, villain or hero. His next target? Spider-Man. It's a close fight between the two masked heroes, but Spider-Man manages to bring Deadpool down and blood sprays onto the ground. You'd think that would do the trick, but the fight is far from over with Wade's regenerative quality. As Spider-Man approaches Wade, Wade pulls the trick out of his sleeve and unceremoniously shoots Spider-Man from under the chin. And just like that, Spider-Man is no more. At the passing of their beloved neighborhood hero, people start clamoring for justice, just as Deadpool finds an alley to escape into. As he walks deeper into the darkness, Wade resumes the conversation with the same voice that ordered him to kill everyone at the asylum. He starts planning who he's going to go after next, and this time, he has the thirst to go for something big. Meanwhile at the Avengers headquarters, Iron Man, Captain America, Wolverine, and others have gathered to discuss what's going on to find a solution to Deadpool's bloody rampage. With so much loss, all they want now is payback. Jarvis suddenly bursts into the room in the middle of the conversation and announces that Dr. Pym has gone missing. He had been concerned that his supply of Pym particles was depleted, almost as if they had been stolen. Suddenly, a flash of blue light and smoke explodes in the center of the room as Captain America shouts for them to take cover. But it's too late. The explosion kills every hero in the room, except for Luke Cage. As he tries to get up from the rubble, Deadpool assures him that he'd thought about the possibility of someone surviving the initial bomb, so he had shrunk down a couple of extra bombs for special purposes. He fires into Luke's face and kills him from the inside. All that's left is Thor, God of Thunder. Thor swoops in with his hammer and attempts to attack Deadpool, but Wade is ready. Using pin particles, he makes the Mjolnir bigger and uses it against its own wielder. Thor plummets to the ground, dying by his own weapon. 
Talking yet again to the disembodied voice, he mulls over his satisfaction, deciding if he should stop there. Just as he thought there was no one else to fight him, Hulk comes from behind and tears Deadpool's head away from his torso in one sickening move. Wanting to be alone, Hulk retreats into a cave and falls asleep. However, when he awakes, Wade is already regenerated and kills him on the spot. As all this was happening, Mary Jane and the others had gathered at Aunt May's house to remember the people they lost in the rampage. That and to hire Taskmaster, Deadpool's old nemesis to kill him once and for all. Taskmaster begins the search as Deadpool continues to leave more and more bodies on his wake. But Wade always manages to slip away. Taskmaster had initially agreed to hunt him down because of the money, but now it's a different ball game. With so much destruction, Deadpool definitely has to go. Deadpool, however, has more urgent business to attend to. He holds Professor Xavier hostage at an abandoned, decrepit building with nothing in mind other than to torture and assault him. Wade demands the professor to call the X-Men, and when they respond to his pleas, they are attacked and are killed off one by one to the professor's horror. The other mutants are unfortunately met with the same fate. Xavier continues to plead with Wade, asking him to stop the bloodshed. Wade recalls how he had always been viewed as crazy, mad, and even a maniac because he views the world a little differently. But thanks to Psycho Man, everything his subconscious had been trying to tell him started making sense. Deadpool mentions the fourth wall and explains how it had always crushed him and everyone else bit by bit by bit. As Deadpool mulled over his realizations, Professor Xavier tries to get inside his mind to defeat the lunatic from the inside, not realizing how insane Wade truly is and how doing so would cost him his life. Wade's brain was too much to handle and Xavier succumbs to it as his action leaves him brain dead. Even as the professor passed, Mutants everywhere were experiencing their own version of Deadpool's torturous killing spree, except for Wolverine who was still very much alive. Annoyed, Wade walks off to finish the man himself and make sure it sticks this time around. Meanwhile, Wolverine happens upon Arcade, who is in shambles after learning what Wade wanted him to build, calling Deadpool insane. He tries to beg Wolverine to help him out of his shackles. Instead, Wolverine helps Arcade out of his misery and kills him. Wolverine explores further, and just as he finds X-23 and Dakin dead in another room, Wade arrives wearing a fur headdress. He likens himself to a hunter, bearing a weapon that would primarily be harmful to Wolverine's healing factor, a carbonadium blade. Deadpool attacks in one swift motion and plunges the blade into Wolverine's torso. Knowing full well he has a tendency to come back to life repeatedly, Wade makes sure he never returns, by beheading him. In another part of town, Taskmaster continues his pursuit of the deranged killer. He finds himself at 177A Bleecker Street, the home of Doctor Strange. But as suspected, everyone inside had already been slain by Deadpool and had long been soaking in their own blood. However, it wasn't a simple case of kill and run this time. No, Deadpool needed information. And as Taskmaster flipped through one of the books on the floor, he found what Wade had been searching for, a page on the nexus of all realities. Things have just taken a turn for the worse. As Deadpool continues his bloody rampage against heroes and villains, they also decide to contribute to the brutal carnage and wreck havoc everywhere. However, not all villains and heroes resorted to the unthinkable. Some have participated in a mass suicide pact in a surprising turn of events, throwing themselves off high-rise buildings to finally leave all the madness behind. It's a sight the world has never seen before. Religious radicals have started proclaiming that the end of days have come with all the destruction. Others have called it some form of punishment against these superhumans, or that the outcomes of their actions are just now catching up to them, as they should. Whatever the case, tragedy and hopelessness have found their way into the world with no sign of any light at the end. Among those still fighting the chaos is the Punisher, Frank Castle. On a mission to kill Deadpool and stop the madness, he camps inside an apartment and waits patiently to get a glimpse of Wade from one of the windows to finish him off. As soon as contact is made, Frank fires, and his bullets hit Wade on the head. Knowing he has very little time until the maniac regenerates, he rushes to the building to ensure Wade never gets back on his feet. However, when he enters the room, he realizes in horror that it isn't Wade, but the puppet master. It was a decoy, and a successful one. As Frank remains stupefied, Deadpool appears behind him, and the Punisher breaks into a cold sweat. He knows what's coming. In a matter of seconds, Frank was on the ground, a bullet hole in his head, Wade standing over him, victorious. He acknowledges that although it was the Punisher's role to defeat the marvels of the world, his mission was bigger. 
Deadpool's plans were just beginning, with the big boy toys he has at his disposal. The Taskmaster eventually catches up to Wade in a secluded forest, and declares that he's done chasing. He vows to bury Wade in a grave so deep it would be impossible for anyone to find him, so people will forget the chaos he had created in the world. Deadpool seems to be unaffected by the Taskmaster's words, and instead reflects on their current situation. According to Wade, it makes sense that he is the last stand, a battle with his nemesis, and a shadow of all people that had fallen in the wake of his actions. In response, the Taskmaster offers Wade a mercy killing. They break into a fight as Wade continues reflecting on his past and how people used to perceive him as just a lovable goofball. Dodging his attacks, he explains how everyone is merely a puppet and that all he wants is to save them all from this endless cycle of continuity. As Taskmaster starts mimicking Deadpool's reflexes, he realizes his mistake, just as the Man-Thing appears and tears his head off. Deadpool then uses its flesh to conjure a portal, a worth, understood sacrifice between one monster to another, or at least, according to the narrative in Deadpool's messed up mind. Wade steps into the light, and the disembodied voice lets him know that the mission isn't over. There's so much more to do, universe is to free, and there's no time to rest. Eventually, Wade stumbles onto the real world and happens upon one of Marvel's conference rooms, following the plot and breaking the fourth wall, exactly how it was written to end. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.